I'd like to talk about back muscles now, I and mean, in particular, I want to talk about the intrinsic muscles of the back. Um, but of course, as soon as we start talking about intrinsic muscles of the back, uh, we then go, well, what are the extrinsic muscles of the back? Um, there's actually quite an easy way to tell the difference between these. Um, and it's to do with the fundamental body plan that all vertebrates have. Uh, and I'm going to exemplify the vertebrate body plan here with my fish. Um, here's a fish and there's the skeleton and here are the muscles above the vertebral column. And in vertebrate zoology we would call those, or vertebrate anatomy, we would call those epaxial muscles. Then we have these other ones that are sitting below the vertebral column, like this, showing in green, and we would call those hypaxial muscles. Um, now intrinsically there's not a huge amount of um, difference between these muscles. They're both very yummy to eat, and that's how we usually see them. Um, but there is one fundamental difference, and that's to do with the way those muscles are innervated. So if we think about the spinal cord here, and out of our spinal cord are coming our spinal nerves, and there we go, this is one spinal nerve coming out for each segment. We also know that as soon as that spinal nerve comes out of the vertebral column, it splits into a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus. And the dorsal ramus is what innervates the epaxial muscles, and the ventral ramus is what innervates the hypaxial muscles. Now if we look to humans, or I'm going to try drawing here a generic mammal. Um, just bear with me a sec. There's our vertebral body, there's our neural arch, a neural spine. We've got a rib coming down here. We've got a rib coming around there. It's a transverse process. This is where my drawing skills uh, are revealed to be woefully inadequate. We've got hypaxial muscles here. These are the intercostals, for example. And we've got epaxial muscles here. These are the what we call the intrinsic muscles of the back. We've even got more superficial muscles here, which are things like you know, latissimus dorsi and uh, trapezius. I've shown them in green because they actually belong with the hypaxial set. And the reason for that is because when we have our dorsal root and our ventral root coming out of the spinal cord here. Um, there we go on that side. They come together to form the spinal nerve. The spinal nerve almost immediately divides into a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus. The ventral ramus is what innervates the hypaxial muscles. The dorsal ramus is what innervates the epaxial muscles. And that division is fundamental. So any muscle that we see being innervated by dorsal ramus nerves is an epaxial muscle and then muscle we see being innervated by ventral ramus nerves hypaxial muscles and that includes not only the intercostals the abdominals the diaphragm things like that but it also includes uh, the limb muscles because the limb plexes are derived from the ventral ramus so when we're looking at intrinsic muscles of the back we're looking at muscles that are innervated by the dorsal ramus of the spinal nerves and that's what we would call um, epaxial muscles.